Hello, today we're going to be opening up our, well, I already have it open, but we have a BlackBerry Playbook, and I got it off of eBay, and turns out the USB port right here does not work. I plug in a charger or a USB cable to the computer, nothing happens. Good thing I have a, a fast charger with it, so I can at least charge it, but I can't transfer data. So, we're going to be replacing the USB port. So, there's a plenty of videos on YouTube how to take off the, the, black, the back panel, but I'm going to be going from there. So, take off your back panel. This is the bottom, this is the top. And once you got the back panel off, get your screwdriver and disconnect the battery from these two screws right here. And the Phillips head that I have is too big. There we go. There we go. Perfect. And then using a case opener tool, disconnect the battery from the main board. And then while you're there, disconnect the other connections from the main board using your case opener tool. They're just pop, regular pop connectors. It should be easy to pull off. This has a little clip on here. You have to lift up the black part, lift up the arm. Probably just easier to use a fingernail. Lift up the arm, and then the ribbon cable can be rem removed. I'm just going to leave that there. There are one, two, three, four antennas. Disconnect those. Those are round circular antennas. They just pop off. Just another tip, but this is the 16 gig Wi-Fi only model. But I'm assuming this process will work on the 32 There we go. Another pop connector right here. Okay, that looks like all of them. Okay, pause the video. Pause the video. Once you got all the connectors out, the battery, the screen, speaker wires and antennas for Wi-Fi, this cable right here, this cable right here, this cable right here. Once you got those out, there are one, two, three, four, five screws holding in the motherboard. Take those out and then carefully lift the main board from the case. Lift from the bottom in a clamshell like and pull out. Okay, so here's the back of the main board. Here's my replacement piece right here. I'll give you a link to the eBay or the eBay um, posting that I got this from. It came in a set of two for seven bucks. Here's the back of the main board. Take this little rubber piece off, it just pulls right off. And then when you flip it back over, there is right above right above the USB port there is a white piece of tape. Pull that off with your fingernail. Flip it back over. This piece is sticky, just kinda 
um, protects circuitry. So now we're going to go ahead and, and try to desolder this connector. Okay, on the on the main board, connect holding the USB port in place. I don't know if you can see that it's red. That's solder mask. That stuff has to be grinded off. That can't be soldered off or anything. So I got a little $12 grinder from Walmart. It's the cheapest grinder in the world, and we're going to be grinding it off very carefully. I'll go ahead and pause it. Okay, so I got the USB port off. Here it is. Here's the old USB port. The inside of it was they didn't actually look like this. I actually bent it up a lot to get it off. But the inside was busted, so I couldn't plug anything in. And right here there are pins. Those don't actually get soldered on. They just kind of push against the board to make a contact. So it doesn't actually have to be micro-soldered. So that's what makes this possible by hand. Here's the new USB port. Oops. Here's the entrance. This is the top of it. Here's the back. On the back here there are pins. I wish this thing would... Here, move this. There we go. Um, I don't know if you can see it. It's probably really out of focus. Right there there are pins. What I did was I took this screwdriver and I pushed them up just a little bit. So that when I go to put it on the board, it'll actually make a better contact, and it'll actually push against the contacts rather than just resting upon them. So I pushed them up just a little bit, so that when I push them up, when I put this housing on the board, it, it'll push the pins back, and it'll make a stronger connection. Here's the board. As you can see, it isn't the cleanest job. I took the Dremel, and you can see where I made the Dremel. Uh, here's the here, let me grab this. Here's the pins that the USB port makes in contact with, and there are four holes: one, two, three, four. You can't see them because they're covered up with a little bit of solder, but those were the those are where the legs go in for the USB housing. And all it does is you just put the legs inside the little holes, and then solder in the legs so that they don't move. It doesn't have to make there's no electrical contact going through the legs. It's just there to hold it in. So that's what we're going to do. Just solder in the new port. Hopefully it'll make a good connection with these. Assuming I didn't, you know, bust them off with the Dremel. $12 Walmart Dremel. And all it does is just go on just like that. Whoops. Not like that, but it's going to go on right here. Come on. Okay, let's move this out of the way so I can actually see what I'm doing. going to have to make some adjustments to make this stick. I still have a little bit of this masking, this solder mask to get off because it's keeping the uh, housing from laying flush on the board. So I'm going to scrape that little bit of masking off with just a screwdriver and we'll come back. Okay, so I got the new port on. Um, pull it over here. Um, actually, no, go back to that. Much better. Alright, now it's in focus. The four legs, there's one right here, one right here, one right here, one right here. The, uh, the holes in the main board where the legs go were actually covered up with solder, and I couldn't get the solder out, so I couldn't get the legs in. So what I did was, here, pull away for a second. Can you see it? Basically what I did was held the port on there with my thumb 
and took my soldering iron and from the back I heated up the holes so it melted the solder that was inside the holes so when it was when it was moist or when it was uh, heated up pushed the leg in went in smoothly did the same thing for that hole same thing for that hole same thing for actually it's right that one and that one and I don't know if you can get a good view here's where the pins are and the contacts on the board they seem to be lined up and making good contact so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm probably gonna put just a tad bit more solder on these two back legs just to make sure everything does make sure everything holds and you know I'm put a tad bit more solder on those legs make sure everything holds so we'll come back when I'm done okay now like they say the put together is the exact reversal of take apart so let's go ahead and do that I'm going to plug this in put the screws back in I didn't actually have to there's four screws one two and then three and four I didn't actually have to take those off but I did anyway so I'm go ahead and put those back in they're actually different size from all the other screws so if you do end up taking those out set them, set them in a different spot otherwise you'll forget which ones go where some of these screws are different sized like these screws look like they're the same so I'm just gonna go ahead and start screwing back in the board uh, and after we get all the screws in we're gonna plug all the connections back in boot it up and pray to God that it works So hopefully I didn't knock off any of the capacitors or screw them up with the Dremel. So I'm afraid, I don't know if I did or not, and I can't tell. But, I'm just going to have to, oops. <laughs> a different size screw. Lovely. <sighs> yeah, the two bottom screws are slightly smaller than the rest of them. So keep those somewhere organized. I'm talking about this screw and that screw. They're slightly smaller than all the rest of the screws. Keep your screws organized. Don't over tighten them. It's only a PCB board with that PCB board. Not your Ford pickup truck. I'm an idiot. Oops. Okay. Try not to strip it. Uh. Uh. Alright, there we go. And that's all the screws, so let's plug everything back in. 
plug in the speaker and antenna wires they just pop right on don't worry about trying to remember where they go they just kind of line up where they go so you don't have to try and remember what part goes to what wire it's hard to mess these up or any of the connections for that matter.